Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of Spitting Venom, aka The Venom Vlog. This is episode 199, and today, as promised at the end of the last episode, we are going to check out Tom Hardy's Instagram, and I'm going to try to establish a timeline of something that might be going on. Uh, and now, uh, none of this is obviously confirmed, this is just my theories on stuff, uh, but I also will play devil's advocate with myself like I typically do, so uh, so we're going to dive into this. Uh, first, I want to show off this really quick picture of him. It's actually not of him, it's of an airplane. He posted this a while ago, like two weeks ago, and I just liked it. I thought it was really cool. It was this old like airplane, this aircraft that uh, has venom uh, on the side of it. And you can see in the art here, I have the picture up. Hopefully uh, it says lethal protector. We are venom. And the art was actually done by Adigranov, who is a big Marvel artist, uh, definitely in the early to mid nine, uh, mid two thousands as well. Early to mid two thousands. Uh, he did like the extremist storyline for Iron Man, you know, which the Iron Man three, you know, movie kind of based a little bit off of. Uh, so yeah, I mean, his, his artwork is always great, but the fact that he got hired to do something on an airplane, it's like, I, it's one of those things where I don't think about where it's like, Oh, all these talented people and these artists that work in comics, you don't think about the other job offers they get and the other things they do, uh, for fun or for side work. And I think this is actually really cool to see an airplane like this coming at you. And it's old school, you know, like it's an old school airplane. Uh, which is really neat. Uh, and as a Green Lantern fan, I would love to see something like this uh, with Green Lantern, although that would make more sense to do like a, you know, a, a actual aircraft from the Air Force. Uh, but still, this just looked awesome. It had like a retro feel to it, and Tom Hardy posted it, uh, which is great. <laughs> so anyway, I just wanted to share that with you. It doesn't really affect the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about. I just thought it was cool. Uh, but here, about a week ago, we see Tom Hardy outside of Mel's Drive-In Diner, or, a or Mel's Diner uh, in Los Angeles here in Hollywood. And that's actually not too far from me. I'm like five minutes away, as long as there's no traffic. Uh, but I'm like really close to this place. And I've eaten there a few times and it's really, really good. Uh, it's, you know, just classic diner food or whatever. But it's been a part of Hollywood for years. Um, it, it goes back a long way. So he was outside of Mel's. So it made me wonder, you know, like this guy's really busy. He's shooting, you know, all these other shows he's working on. What is, you know, what would bring him back to L.A.? Uh, why would he be hanging out at Mel's Diner? And then this next image kind of clinched it for me. Uh, so this is Tom outside of, uh, at the Sony lot here in Culver City uh, in Los Angeles. Because this picture here, as we've seen, I'm going to put a comparison up. Uh, here's an article from 2016 that I found that shows this to be true. Because I was like, oh, no one's going to take me for my word that this is the Sony lot. I need to find a picture. Because I know I've been to the Sony lot even after uh, working there, like, you know, eight years ago or whatever. I go, I've been, you know, I've been back to there since. And since Ghostbusters has come out and I've seen this uh, set up over there because they originally had all these offices and they were going to make like a whole production of just Ghostbuster films. And obviously that didn't go the way they wanted, uh, but they still have this set up over there. And it made me realize, oh wow, he's at the Sony lot. So there's proof uh, from this article that fans were brought there in 2016 to see the trailer for the new Ghostbusters film. And I'll put a link to that article. I got that from down below in case you want to, you know, cooperate my story. Uh, but then, uh, you know, also made me think, well, what? Like, he's in LA and now he's, you know, five days ago, he was at, uh, you know, Sony. What's he doing at Sony? And then these pictures started popping up and it shows of a crew outside an outside location, which I can't really tell if it's in LA or not. It might not be. I mean, for all I know, this is an old picture and that's the other thing to take in. This is where the devil's advocate part of me, because you're going to see what I'm building to here in a second. But my, the devil advocate in me is saying, no, these aren't taken now. These are old pictures that he's sharing now. And I think that's what's happening. But uh, I still, you know, it's like, Hey, it's some behind the scenes stuff. Uh, you know, it's still neat. But then this was the real clincher. This was the one that got everyone kind of interested. It started to get everyone interested. At least me, it got me really interested. And this is a shot of Tom Hardy with Kelly Marcel, one of the writers of the, the Venom movie. She was like the one who I think wrote the first draft or one of the first drafts, but it shows them behind the scenes. And again, it could just be them from you know months and months ago when they were actually filming the movie. It's clearly they're on a soundstage. They have a big rig behind them there, scaffolding and everything, uh, but it could also be, and where my theory is heading, is that Tom Hardy went to Sony this past week to do a couple of reshoots slash pickups. Now, again, that might not be the case. You know, for, for all I know, this is just old pictures. Like I said, he could just be posting older stuff, and that's fine if that is. Uh, but I do, I was invited to two things recently at Sony that I couldn't go to. And I don't know what they were, actually. It was like a blind invitation, uh, one through a friend and then one through like a, you know, one of their services of like, you know, doing a private screening and doing a focus group kind of thing. So 
it kind of fits that maybe they did a screening, if not for the whole movie, maybe some of the movie, um, you know, at Sony and they showed some of the Venom movie off typically and a lot of people will be like well isn't that a little early for a test screening or you know to get feedback on and it's really not it's actually right about the right time like between June and July if the movie's coming out in October that's not a bad time to do some kind of screening test to show like hey you know let's get some feedback and we got we got planned either reshoots because most movies do reshoots anyway. Maybe they're like, hey, we got a couple days of reshoots planned, or we got some pickup shots. Maybe not even something that's really just reshoots. It's just like, oh, we we would have rather had this angle in this scene, you know. So let's pick up that shot and let's go to the you know build rebuild the set and just do this quick pickup and get Tom from this angle and have the conversation happen this way. Uh, so sometimes it's something that simple and they're not reshooting something or reimagining the scene. They're just getting it from another angle. So it could be anything like that. Something simple. Um, or it could be something like a reshoot, but you do normally would do it fairly soon after a screening because then that way you get some feedback and you can factor that in and say, all right, now since we're doing the pickups anyway and we plan for this week to do reshoots, we got some feedback from audiences. Let's see if we can tweak some of those things that they said in those scenes that we're already going to do pickups and reshoots on. And maybe if we have time to add something, we can add something too. Or, you know, just bring them into a, a studio booth and do ADR. I talked about that before with Jenny Slate when she said symbiote. I was wondering if maybe they would have her redub that in ADR and have her actually say symbiote. Um, or symbiote, you know, either version. I, I don't think so. I think that's going to be her character and how her character says things. And I know people, some people do say symbiote out there. So I have a feeling that's just her doing that. Uh, but you know, that this is the time for that. So Tom Hardy in LA hanging out with Kelly Marcel. I was like, well, I don't know if they would, they might bring her if they're doing a couple reshoots or pickups and they want a line on the fly or, you know, Tom's like, hey, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, get into the head and space of this character again. I just played another character, uh, you know, bring a writer on to, you know, talk things out with them. Could be anything like that. Or like I said, it could be an old picture. But then we got more stuff, uh, which is this shot here, which I really like. And I, again, I don't know if this is new or is this an older picture. It might be an older one. I think I'm judging by people's looks and stuff. Uh, but what I like about this is that it's actually Reed Scott. Uh, we got our first look at Reed Scott in this movie. Uh, and there's, you know, rumors saying he might play Patrick Mulligan, who is the cop that will eventually become Toxin, uh, who it was Toxin in the comic books. Uh, but we haven't seen any pictures of him on set or anywhere. And this is Tom Hardy, Michelle Williams, Ruben Fleischer, and Reed Scott. And so that's pretty awesome that we finally got a shot of him in what I'm thinking might be his clothes for the movie. Uh, because Ruben's kind of wearing his, you know, sweater, or, you know, jacket that he has. There's a spotlight behind them. So I don't know if it's a pickup shot or if it's, you know, what it is. But uh, I just thought it was interesting. I wanted to, you know, share all this stuff with you guys and, and show you why I'm piecing together this theory of mine that they might be in the reshoot slash pickup phase of this movie right now and just trying to wrap it up quickly. Because obviously Tom Hardy has a busy schedule. So it makes sense to me that he would be like, hey, look, we got like this week, you know, I have off. I'll come to LA and we'll do everything you need, ADR, pickups, reshoots, whatever you need, we'll do it then. Um, so I'm kind of leaning towards these being potential reshoots, but I would totally, you know, not be surprised if these are just older pictures that uh, that Tom is just finally sharing as they're ramping up for Comic-Con, because obviously at Comic-Con, they're going to, you know, show off possibly a new trailer. I'm thinking we're going to get a new trailer, we're going to get a new poster, uh, and we might get, uh, you know, some casting news as well. Uh, and possibly the rating of this film, because a lot of you guys have been asking about that, and I feel like that question will be answered probably at Comic-Con as well. So these next two pictures are of Tom Hardy again on his Instagram. I think one of these pictures was deleted, uh, but you actually can see Ruben Fleischer here and he's got like a full, he's got like facial hair growing in, it looks like. Um, and uh, he's got like a you know script page or something in his back pocket. It's a really great shot. You see like this, you know, uh, Eddie Brock's leaning against this like little, almost, it could be a water tower. I was thinking of that. Um, you know how the base of a water tower in New York has like that kind of, you know, cross beams and stuff, or it could be him at a dock. I think there's maybe some dirt on the ground around them. So he could be like on a dock somewhere. We did talk about that with uh, the casting, how there was like, um, you know, uh, sailors and, and, you know, dock workers that were cast as extras and stuff. So it could be, you know, from that scene, uh, could be anything. I don't know. <laughs> but he did post this picture and I think it got taken down. I, I couldn't re-find it when I was looking for it. The next picture I did, you know, still see up, but this one I didn't see, but it has Ruben Fleischer there and uh, Tom Hardy. And I'm wondering again, if this is a pickup shot, if this is, you know, Ruben Fleischer coming in, they rebuilt this one scene and they're like, all right, let's shoot something here to get like this different angle. 
angle of this scene or something because it looks pretty simple it looks like something they could throw up in like maybe two days you know building wise and then getting all the lights and stuff ready maybe another day or so so uh, yeah it looks like something that could be kind of quick uh, for reshoots and then maybe drop like a green screen behind it and then digitally add whatever environment is supposed to be around there so uh yeah just again more thinking that it could be reshoot stuff because tom hardy he does Sometimes post older pictures of things like, oh, this happened a while ago, a couple months ago. He does do that sometimes, but then sometimes he does, he is in the moment and he's like, hey, let's share something now uh, or something that just happened recently in the past couple of days. So that's why part of my brain is thinking maybe some of this is from reshoots. And this second picture here, we're going to see the director of photography, Matty Libatique, who we made a whole video on. I'm very excited that he's on this movie and he's shooting this movie. And you can see there that there's some dirt there. It looks like there's pavement that's there and it's chiseled away at like there's like some chunks, uh, you know, ripped out of it or chunked out of it. Uh, and then you have Matthew Libatique sitting there kind of framing a shot and uh, Tom Hardy kind of giving him a little wave and leaning against that same uh, you know, scaffold thing or wooden thing that he was when in Ruben Fleischer's picture that, that I just showed. So uh, yeah, I mean, this is, these are all great. I love that they're black and white. Obviously, I'm a sucker for black and white. I hope there's this great, you know, I would love to see like a little hardcover art book come out that has like behind the scenes shots of this movie uh, all in black and white. That would be awesome for someone like me. I don't think anyone else would buy that, but I certainly would buy um, a copy. If I could afford 100 copies, I would to justify them printing it. But uh, yeah, I, th I think this is great. I mean, uh, these photos are a nice peek at the movie. I don't know what's happening in this scene. Uh, obviously, Eddie Brock's by himself. He's he's leaning against something. Um, he could be hurt. He could be injured. Maybe he was thrown towards that. Although I feel like if he was, that you know the wood behind him would be broken or shattered or something like that. So I think this is, uh, you know, just him leaning against something, maybe after a battle, maybe trying to figure things out, maybe talking to himself again. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, I want to hear your theories too. So what do you think of all these photos? What do you think of the plane I showed? What do you think of my theory that maybe this is reshoot territory or pickup territory? Um, or do you think these are just older pictures that Tom is just now sharing as they're ramping up for the promotion that they're probably going to do at Comic-Con uh, with their panel that they're going to have? And I'm, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a new trailer and hopefully a new poster, the rating of the movie, and then some other casting announcements too. And maybe to prove that this movie's rated R, maybe they'll do a red band trailer too, which would be kind of nice uh, just to settle that debate of whether this is rated R or not. But you guys, again, let me know what you think. I'm here for you. So let me know down in those comments below what you think of all this. Thanks for watching my show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in the future. Peace.